as the hot, he don't have to know. 2023 election, now we the way for. And Paul, on what demon don't come as a night, he say why Peter Obi is better than Bola Amen Tinubu in management of public funds. <laughs> I go along and talk with you, you want to talk because he drop analysis, talk different things concerning Lagos and Anabra. He compared the two, he went together. I can't say yes, what did this man they talk since day? Please, when I watch Paul Owadima make it give none that analysis. And please, after watching this, the obedient family, don't forget to share this video. And if you are new to my page, please follow my page when I watch the video. Tinubu is a beneficiary of a favorable media. It's a beneficiary of a favorable media. And the economy of Nigeria being centered in Lagos has favored Lagos. So if really Tinubu is a star, Lagos should be competing with Dubai. Lagos should be competing with United Arab Emirates because of the kind of advantage it enjoys. But we, you and I know that Lagos is not like that. Lagos have been under Aswadibola since 1999. Yet, Lagos have been ranked the most hostile city to live in the world. Lagos is also a, a city that it is the most indebted state in Nigeria after the federal government. Godfatherism is the order of the day. Is that what you are comparing with Anambra State? So first, if you want to compare Anambra State, you look at the history of Anambra State first. Now, before I go to the history of Anambra State, and uh, I want you to be there. Uh, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button. Hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel, anytime I have a new video, you will be among the first to know. God bless you. Anambra was created in 1991. In the August of that year, Oka became the, became the capital. Oka was just like a, a small organic town. So how do you begin to compare Oka development with Lagos? Lagos that have been there for a very long time. Lagos have been existing as a colonial settlement even before it became the capital in 1914. So when uh, P2B became governor, in 2003, he inherited a state without even a well-developed government house, without a well-developed state house of assembly structure and all that. The state was indebted, hugely indebted. Teachers were all salaries. Other civil servants were all salaried. The, the state was paralyzed by the People's Democratic Party who were in charge. And they sat in Godfather. So it was, it was a state that was in total disarray, crippled by Godfatherism. Even when uh, uh, Peter Obi was declared a winner, you see the, the, there was a rampage by these godfathers destroying government properties and institutions. So Peter Obi started from ground zero, but he was able to do a lot. He was able to pay all the debts that, uh, that Anambra State was owing. He was able to, to, to clear the teacher salaries. He was able to move the states that his education was at his lowest ebb to number one in education in Nigeria. He was able to bring big time industries, pharmaceutical companies, brewery companies. So when you see Peter, we talk about moving from consumption to production. He has practicalized it in a number of states. He was the person that made the nursing motors what it is today by giving huge contracts to the company to build over 1,000 vehicles. 
for use in other branches, schools, and officials. He was the person that showed that uh, uh, innocent could be could, could be patronized by government. He did all this to galvanize the economy of Anambra State. And look at what he achieved. By the time he was living, Anambra was the least indebted state in Nigeria. He did so many things without borrowing money from anywhere. And he left behind a surplus of over 75 billion naira. And he left about $156 million for which he had hope to transform SMEs in Anambra State. The way that the Chinese were able to do it in China. And he did not give himself homongous retirement benefits. As I speak to you now, if uh, Peter B is the only former governor that does not enjoy pension, he didn't sign any homongous retirement benefit for himself. Unlike us, what Bola meant, you know? Go and look at how much Tinubu signed. Because that the Lagos pension bill. Pension law for ex governors was the hard work of Aswan Bola Betinubu. Where they were built, they built houses for them. Every three, three years they changed vehicles for them. Despite the fact that today Aswan Bola Betinubu claimed to be richer than uh, Oshun State, yet he's still collecting all those, all those pension Lagers. Yet there is no single house, either in Abuja or Oka or Lagos, which an state government has given to P2B or that he enjoys. Unlike other former governors, when beat Akabio, beat Chibikero uh, 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 all of them, all over the country, they are enjoying stupendous. Legends under the patient laws they wrote by themselves and sent to the rubber stamp state house of assemblies. So if if P2B could be able to manage the resources of Anambra State, which is a state that is receiving one of the least allocations in this country. And he was able to let it debt free with surplus. How can you compare him with a state like Lagos State with the humongous advantages enjoyed by federal presence? The humongous allocation they collect from federal allocation and from the humongous uh, revenues he got, he gets from several OEA companies and multinational companies that are domiciled there by accident of geography. Yet, Lagos is the most indebted state in Nigeria. Lagos is not working. Lagos is the most terrible place to live in, city to live in the world. I so said, go and Google it. Maybe I'll have to put some of, some of the ratings of Lagos around the world. By rating agencies, I will put it at the bottom of this video so that you go and verify. So much for how much uh, as when Bola Metidu has done Lagos that he have to replicate it nationwide. If Lagos resources have been well utilized, if Lagos had had a prudent manager like P2B for eight years, Lagos would have been more than Dubai. I can tell you for free. Because of the prudent way you manage the resources. And there would have been no Godfatherism in Lagos. Because P2B, unlike Aswan Bola Metu, don't believe in Godfatherism. He believes that he has done his own part. The other person should come and follow the right part. 
But that's not the way Tinubu operates. Tinubu is the one that determines who becomes governor and what the person will pursue as governor and whether the person will get second term or not. Kashim Shetima. He take a job at uh, Mr. Pito B. He said that Mr. Pito B is living in Os Lagos home and not Oka. So most of the infrastructures you see in Lagos are the product of all these years of being the capital of Nigeria and then the advantages that it enjoys. Lagos is where you have all the major ports in Nigeria that federal governments approve for so many things. For whatever reason, the federal government of Nigeria does not want eastern ports to be well utilized. Like Calabar port is underutilized, Port Harcourt port is underutilized, Sapere port, Wari ports. So they force everybody literally to be using Lagos port. Now that has caused Lagos to become hub of commercial activities at the expense of other cities. So when you see so many people from South East living in Lagos, it's not because there's anything they are benefiting from being in Lagos, except the opportunity that was created deliberately by federal government for whatever reason. In this country right now, you cannot import pharmaceuticals from Port Harcourt port, from Calabar port, or from Sapele port, or from Wari port, Wari port. All the pharmaceuticals are imported from Lagos. So this has given Lagos undue advantage. Even motor spare parts, you are not allowed to import it from Port Harcourt, from Calabar, because if they were motor spare part dealers were allowed to import from Calabar, from Port Harcourt, electronics importers, they were they will have no business based in Lagos, being based in Lagos. Okay, you find out that major business people from Southeast we are forced to live in Lagos. Because Lagos port is the port that works. And that has given Lagos the advantage of revenue generation more than any other state in the country. Look at the oil companies in Nigeria. The oil companies in Nigeria that are supposed to make their headquarters in the Niger Delta, they made their headquarters in Lagos. If you ask them, they say it's because of insecurity in Niger Delta. Who is benefiting by the headquarters of multinational oil companies being in Lagos? It is the Lagosians. Because that's where they now pay revenue. In fact, it will shock you that many Niger Deltans cannot get jobs in big oil companies without going to Lagos for interview. That is why you see a preponderance of people of uh, living within Lagos and environment working in major oil company at the expense of where the oil company oil 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 deposits are them domicile in Niger Delta. So because of this advantage that Lagos enjoys, both being the capital, being the center of the uh, commercial activity in terms of ports activities. So Lagos have had a lot of advantage. If you study the geography of rail lines in Nigeria, you find out that the geography of rail lines in Nigeria by the Europeans, you see the, the, the ports terminating Lagos port and Port Harcourt port. Because all the raw materials that are coming from the hinterlands are supposed to be exported from Lagos. Imports coming inside come from Lagos. So this has given Lagos an uncommon advantage. Therefore, anybody running Lagos is therefore running with huge advantage than any other state. And it's also easy to be seen as a performer in Lagos because everything is there for you. And the media can be easily be on your palms. Most of the, the major newspapers houses in Nigeria are domiciled in Lagos. So you find out that they tend to, to overpraise Lagos governors because some of these media organizations have been bought over. 
by whoever is Lagos governor. That is why you hardly hear that any Lagos governor did not perform. From Ote Dola to uh, uh, Jack Onde to what have you, they are always praising them as uncommon performers, as stars, because they have they used to take care of the media people in Lagos. That is the gospel truth. So even their shortcomings are covered up. Even if you look at the antecedent of Tinubu, the certificate scandal and everything, there were a lot of cover-up by media in Lagos. That's why today you hardly hear about it. Many of the papers that were even pushing it to investigate certificates of Tinubu right from 1999, they have all gone cold. They have all been bought over. So it is easy to be seen as a star in Lagos.